Chakalissa was the home to a group of Native Americans from 1,000 years ago to the site's abandonment around 500 years ago. It was part of a large Native American political province, the capital of which was located at present-day Chickasaw Heritage Park in downtown Memphis. The village was built on top of a bluff high above the floodwaters of the nearby Mississippi River. The river has moved about a mile to the west over the past 500 years. Archaeological evidence suggests that the site had a cycle of being occupied and abandoned many times throughout this 500-year span. The Chuckalissa site is an example of a Mississippian society site. The term Mississippian represents groups of societies not only from a particular geographic region, but also a particular time period. Mississippian Native American societies were prominent from around 1200 years ago to the time of European contact 500 years ago. These societies were found from the American Midwest and Southeast, practiced platform mound building, and most were likely connected through a religious network called the Southeastern Ceremonial Complex. The Mississippian Temple Mound Complexes, like those of Chuckalissa, are the latest examples of Native American monumental architecture in the Mid-South and were built around the same time as sites like Cahokia, near St. Louis, and Moundville in Alabama. At its height, Chuckalissa had a population of nearly a thousand. Platform mounds signified the elite social status of those that lived on them. The largest mound in Chuckalissa is called the Chief's Mound and was the location of the village's temple structure as well as the chief's home. The mounds were developed in stages, indicating growth along generations or upon the death of a leader until they became the height they are today. At Chuckalissa, the mounds surround a flattened area called the plaza. The plaza was the hub of the community and served as the meeting area for the village where food and materials could be shared and games like stickball could be played. Houses were built around the plaza and north of the large mound during this period. Mississippian people were agricultural and relied on annual crops of corn, beans, and squash in addition to meat from hunting and fishing. Life for the people of Chuckalissa was occupied not only with farming, but with obtaining rare materials for trade and survival, as well as resources for luxuries like art. Mississippian cultures are particularly known for their ceramic vessels and pottery that contain different effigy forms inspired by animals and nature. Items such as ceramics and stone tools were then used by their creators or were traded with other groups in a vast trade network that extended from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. Archaeological findings suggest that the occupants of Chuckalissa traded their goods for things like copper and other minerals, marine shell, and flint. Marine shells were used for decorative purposes, while imported flints made excellent tools like arrowheads and spear points. Like all cultures in the Americas, life was drastically changed with European contact. Chuckalissa was abandoned for an undetermined reason prior to Europeans entering the area possibly due to the rapid spread of newly introduced European diseases. For this reason, archaeologists named the site Chuckalissa, which means abandoned houses in the Choctaw language. In 1541, the Spanish explorer Hernando de Soda may have visited the nearby parking site in Arkansas, but likely didn't find Chuckalissa. Over the past 500 years, several nations claimed the land that Chuckalissa is on, not knowing about the site itself. By 1800, the bluff was considered the property of the expanding United States. In 1854, the land was run as a cotton plantation and was worked by 19 enslaved African Americans who were purchased as laborers along with the land, its buildings, and livestock. These individuals were freed during the course of the Civil War. In 1936, the land was purchased by the state to create the Shelby County Negro Park, now the T.O. Fuller State Park. This park was to be the Jim Crow era equivalent to the whites-only Shelby Forest located north of Memphis. The archaeological site of Chuckalissa was discovered by a group of African-American Civilian Conservation Corps workers building a swimming pool for the park. The University of Tennessee began archaeological excavations at the site in 1940, but the work was soon halted in response to World War II. In 1956, the site's first museum was opened, a year after archaeological excavations had finally resumed. In January 1962, Memphis State University, now the University of Memphis, assumed administrative responsibility for Chuckalissa, and the site quickly became a central focus of the archaeology program in the Department of Anthropology. Chuckalissa supported a continuous series of field schools and was the subject of numerous research projects. 
In 1974, Chukalissa was listed on the National Register of Historic Places and in 1994 was declared a National Historic Landmark. The mission of the C.H. Nash Museum is to protect and interpret the Chukalissa archaeological sites, cultural and natural environments, and to provide the University of Memphis community and the public with exceptional educational, participatory, and research opportunities on the landscape's past and present Native American and traditional cultures. Today, the museum seeks to continue this mission with a hands-on and thoroughly engaging approach. Our Brister Archaeology Discovery Lab allows visitors to handle real artifacts dating as far back as the site's first settlement. The hands-on lab also includes interactive games and puzzles to help spark an interest in archaeology in children and adults alike. Our exhibit halls highlight the Native American prehistory of the site and contemporary Choctaw and Chickasaw exhibits, as well as the history of the museum's neighboring Westwood African American community in our Southwest Memphis exhibit. Our grounds include the main mounds of the complex, as well as a discovery trail and a certified tree arboretum. Be sure to also check out our bulletins, like us on Facebook, and sign up for our newsletter in order to see what upcoming programs, activities, or volunteer and internship opportunities we have planned. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy your visit.